Here's a video that is going to review what we're doing in 4.5. Section 4.5 is integrating using u substitution. We're actually going to spend three days on it. So this is going to review what we did over the first day, which was basic u substitution with polynomial functions, and then day two, which is basic u substitution with trig functions. I will do a separate video on the third day, and we'll put that all together so you have a complete review. So when you're looking at this, what you're trying to do is u substitution involves integrating composite functions. So we have to identify that inner function. And what then again, what you're thinking is what is being having something done to it. So when you look at this first one, your inner function is the piece under the radical. A lot of times problems with radicals are the easiest to identify because you're just looking beneath the radical. So underneath the function, you have 3 minus 5x squared. We call that u, that innermost function. The next thing we need to do is figure out what is the derivative of u. The derivative of u is negative 10x dx. Now what you want to do is you need that derivative to look like what I have here. We have to figure out an adjustment. I have a 2x dx. I don't have a negative 10x dx. So the way I adjust it is I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. So I get a negative 1 fifth du is equivalent to 2x dx. What this does is it allows me to replace that 2x dx with a negative 1 fifth du. So that we call that the adjustment piece. What am I doing? We had some perfect ones in class, but this is not perfect. So what am I doing to fix it? And then finally, the last thing you need to ask yourself is what's being done to u? So the u is under a radical, and it's also in the bottom. So the u is being taken to the negative 1 half power. So I'm going to come up underneath here, and I'm going to write everything down. I'm going to write my adjustment piece down. I am adjusting by a factor of negative 1 fifth. That is always a constant, a scalar, and it can always be brought out front. And then I'm going to write down what's being done to the u. I am trying to integrate a u to the negative 1 half du. So I've replaced everything and made it use. Now I integrate it, and all my integration with these are going to be power rules. So power 1 greater than 1, negative 1 half is positive 1 half, times uh, 2. So I'm going to get 2u to the 1 half when I integrate it. I still have to take my answer times negative a fifth. I want to put u back in, because my answer should be x's. It should look a lot similar to what we started with. And I want to multiply my coefficients. So I get negative 2 fifths. And then I'm going to take my u, which is 3 minus 5x squared, to the 1 half. And now I'm going to put my plus c. This is a general solution to my problem. And it is back in x's. So again, that u is kind of like the go-between. It allows us to go from something that was a little more complicated, simplify it, make it use, and in the end, put the x's back in. If you ever want to know if your right for final answer makes sense, you could derive it. And you should end up right back where you started. For the trig ones, the trig ones are a little different just because when you're identifying the u, the u is either going to be the angle, because that's what's having something done to it. It's being sine, it's being cosine. Or the u could be the entire trig function. So in this case, um, it would be something like se secant is being taken to the fifth, or cosine is being taken to the fourth. In this particular case, both of my u's for my trig one are actually the angle. Maybe I'll add another one here in a second so we can see a other type. But we're going to start with what I've got. What I have my u is, my u is my angle. My u is 4x squared. The derivative of that is 8x dx. And if you look, I have an x, which is good because I can't introduce a variable, but I don't have an 8. So I'm going to divide out this 8. So my adjustment is going to be a 1 8. And then when I say what's being done to the u, well, this is kind of a strange verb, but it's being secant tangented. I know that's not really a word, but that's what's going on. It's being the angle of secant, and it's also the angle of tangent. Now, the good news is that's a known integral. When you're doing your trig, if you let u be the angle, you better be left with an integral that you know how to work with. The integral of secant tangent is secant. So I get 1 8 secant of u. I'm going to go back to my original problem and figure out what u is. So u is 4x squared. So my answer is 1 8 the secant of 4x squared. If you want, you can put in parentheses, kind of set it off, plus c. For the next problem, the next problem, we're going back to basic polynomials. No trig in this one. Same process, though. We want to identify the u, the inner piece. The inner piece for this one is 2x cubed minus 7. The derivative of that, power out front, power 1 less, is 6x squared. When you take a look at what we've got, I've got an x squared, but I don't need that 6. So I'm going to divide that out, 
giving me a one-sixth adjustment. So now when I go back to my problem, I know I'm going to put a one-sixth. I always put the adjustment out front. Now I'm going to look and say what's being done to the u. The u is being taken to the four-thirds power. I'm going to integrate it. Power one greater would be seven-thirds divided by seven-thirds. So I'm going to get three-sevenths u to the seven-thirds. I'm also going to multiply by a sixth. So I'm going to reduce fractions a little bit. I get one over two, so I get one-fourteenth. My u, I'm going to put back in now, is 2x to the third minus 7 to the four thirds plus c. If you want, you can put that entire thing above the 14. You could put that whole thing over 14 and then plus c. That would be fine as well. Next one's a trig one. It's a very basic trig one. So we'll go through this. And actually, we'll go through this, and then I'll turn around, and I'll look at a more complicated trig one. I'll just kind of do an impromptu one on the next one. And that should be a pretty good reference for the first couple of days of 4-5. The u is the angle. The derivative of 5x is 5, which I do not have in my original integral, so I'm going to divide that 5 out. So my adjustment is 1 fifth. What is being done to it is it's being cosine. The integral of cosine is sine, so I get 1 fifth the sine of u. And then I'm going to go back and replace u with the 5x plus c. And again, if you're unsure, if you derive that, you would end up right back where you started. Let's just do another one, since we're kind of on a roll here. Let's look at another trig one, but kind of showing you the other type of trig. So let's do one that looks like this. Let's do this. So it's also a trig u sub. This is also something we do the second day in 4.5. But the difference here is when we talk about the inner function, our inner function isn't just the angle 7x. What's actually having something done to it is the sine. The sine is being taken to the fourth power. So when I identify my u, I'm not just going to write the angle. I'm going to write the sine of 7x. That is that inner piece. It's being taken to the fourth power. Now when I derive that, derivative of sine is cosine, you also have to take the derivative of the angle. This is by far the most forgotten piece when people take tests and quizzes. So the derivative is 7, oh, I started to write sine, 7 cosine of 7x. So 7 cosine 7x. Now if you take a look up above, you already have the cosine of 7x. That's not the problem. I just don't want the 7 there. So I'm going to divide out the 7 giving me 1 7th as my adjustment. Now when I take a look at my original problem and I say, what's being done to the u? Well, the u was sine of 7x. What's being done to it is being taken to the fourth power. So I have a u to the fourth du when I write it in terms of u's. This is a power rule. Even though you look and say, well, it's a trig problem. It's a trig problem, but when you break it down to what's being done to u, it's not being cosine. It's not being sine. It's being taken to the fourth power. So I'm just going to do a power rule, u to the fifth over 5. Don't forget about the 1 7th. So I'm going to get u to the 5th over 35, which gives me an answer when I put my u back in of the sine to the 5th of 7x over 35 plus c. And once again, if I wanted to derive that, I would have to use a chain rule, and I would get exactly what I had when I started with it. That gives you a pretty good introduction and review of all of the U-sub stuff. The only thing that I didn't cover in this is the last day when we start talking about what do we do with boundaries and what do we do when we call it a complete U-substitution. So I will save that for a future video.